So if you do a good dime analysis and you spend time in it, this isn't just, oh, let me do the quick formula. No, you got to really nurture and spend time in this environment. Me doing an entire dime analysis will take me a good 20, 25 minutes because I use the dime analysis to fill in the rest of the blanks of my fact finding, right? So here's how I first started. I'll tell him, I said, look, Mr. Client, if heaven forbid something was to happen to you today, and I do that every time I go, like knock on wood, right? If heaven forbid something was to happen to you today, on, and I look at my clock, on May 10th, Monday, this afternoon, you don't make it home. And I've got to have a conversation with your family. I got to knock on their door and talk to them about what are some of the things you wanted to make sure you left behind because of the conversation that you and I are having right now, this very moment. I want you to understand, you're not coming home this afternoon. You got to tell me what exactly it is you want to make sure you, you leave your family with, right? What would that story sound like? And before you tell me, Mr. Client, let me tell you what my clients tell me. My clients tell me that they want to leave their family in a debt-free world. They want to replace their income for a period of time that it takes for the family to stabilize themselves. They want to cover the mortgage because that home that they fought so hard for is important. And if they were renting, but they had a goal to buy a house, they want to leave behind enough money so that they can buy a home. They want to cover education for their children because guess what? If they were here, they'd help. And if they weren't here, they'd still equally want to help. And they want to leave behind a legacy to maybe a relative, a church group, a charity group, or maybe even the kids, you know, their future, anything, anything. So again, Mr. Klein, I'm going to ask you, if something happened to you today, and I got to be the guy that knocks on your family's door, I'm the only person that you're going to last talk to about the story, what would that story sound like? Right? Now, when I do this, guys, I get very serious with them. What would that story sound like? Right? You know what most people tell me? All of it. I want to do all of that. Okay, well, let's let's take a step back and figure out what all of that means. Right? If they start talking numbers, I get them away from numbers. Some people will. Some people are like, well, I need a half a million dollars. And I'll tell them, but listen, let's, let's stay away from the numbers for a moment. Let's figure out what the story is, and then we'll figure out how much that story requires. Right? Because sometimes they say, I need a half a million, but then you do the numbers and you're like, bro, you need more than a half a million. I need a dollar. One plus one is two. Math is math. Right? So I have them tell me the story. And, and, and I do specific things through specific corners, ones of these things. So, so here, take some notes on this, right? When they tell me debt, okay, great. What, which debt would you like to pay off? Right? And they start verbally telling me. Once they told me like two or three of them, I asked them for permission. Here's the permission I ask them. Do you mind if I take notes on this? Sure. I then take out my fact finding. That's how I take out my fact finding because now I have permission to take notes. They gave me permission. Sometimes people get very abrasive if you take out a fact finder right then and there and start jotting down their life. They're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing with that info? So I ask them for permission. Right? Do you mind if I take some notes? Cool, no problem. Boom. Debts. I start writing it off. How many credit, how much credit card debt do you have? You know, how much auto loan debt do you have? I start gathering all their debts, 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 all their debts. What am I thinking here? I even ask them this question. I go, do you have any things in collections? You know why? Because I'm trying to see here if there's a credit repair case. Because if there's some credit reparation that we could do, I'm going to refer them to that. Why not? Now here, I put myself on their side when I talk about debt. Because here's the one thing I'll tell them. I go, listen, of all of these debts, how much of them are attached to an asset and how much of them are kosher? Here's why I say this. Here's why I say this, guys. Credit card debt, for example. If the person passes away and they leave behind credit card debt and the person doesn't have assets that the credit card could attach itself to, the debt's not going to all of a sudden pass on to the spouse if the spouse's name isn't on there. It's not. That, credit, that debt just kind of goes with the person. They passed away. I mean, the credit card company's going to have to take a loss. So I show them how I'm willing to be in their corner because after I add up all their debts and I'm like, okay, you got 60 grand of debt, but only... 20,000 of it, you really have to be worried about because this 20,000 is attached to an asset that you want to make sure, you know what I mean? That you want to make sure they don't come after or try to take. The rest of the stuff, it's just going to kind of go away because you don't have a co-signer, right? You don't have a co-signer. You don't, you know, do you have any massive assets that they can attach themselves to? If there are, 
that I included, but I show them how I'm trying to help them minimize the amount of insurance they need. That's what I do here, but I gather all their debts. Then I say income, I go, okay, income, how much do you make on an annual basis, gross? I make 20, 30, you know, I make 50,000 a year, gross, okay. How many years of that income do you think you need to replace? Five years, 10 years, or until your youngest is 18 years of age? Notice what I said, how many years of your income do you need to replace? Five years, 10 years, or until your youngest is 18 years of age? And whatever they tell you, take that number, multiply it by their salary, right? Boom. Now, the technical people here right now that are listening to this might say, well, wait a minute, gross income isn't what's coming into the house. Net income is what's coming into the house. Yes, you're right, but I use the gross number to help account, help offset inflation. That's why I, do, I use the gross number. It's just easier. To offset inflation, I'd rather just take in the gross number, Okay. Then I say the M, now mortgage, Mr. Client, do you have a mortgage? You do, how much would it be to pay off the house? Or I don't, okay, would you wanna make sure that your family can walk into a home and never have to worry about a mortgage again? Yes, okay, what would be the value of a reasonable home today that your family would, you know, your family should walk into? And let them give you a number for mortgage. Once I get into mortgage, now let me back step a little bit. In income, I'm gonna fill out the fact finder in reference to what they do for a living. What do you do for a living? How long have you been doing it? What's the name of your employer? Do you have a side hustle? Do you have a side job? Right? So debts, I'm filling out all the debts. Income, I'm filling out all your employment information. And I'm filling out assets. What other assets apart from your mortgage do you have? Do you have a 401k? Do you have an IRA? Do you have a former employer 401k? Do you have money sitting in the, in, in the bank that's not doing anything? Do you have money under the pillow? So notice, I'm filling out the fact finder as I do this. So I'm not just going to jump to the next thing. I'm going to take time and gather all the info. When it comes to education, education is great for referrals, but it's also great to learn about the kids. What school do the kids go to, right? You know, how old are they? What's their date of birth? Is there a particular college you want them to represent when they go to college? Like, did you go to college, Mr. Client? And do you want your children to go to that college? Sometimes it's important for people that their children represent the same alma mater. Like, I went to University of South Florida, but I don't care if my kids go there. They don't. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm hoping to God they don't jump into college right away. They take a couple of years to really explore what they want to do. You know, not be lazy, but, you know, that's just my view. But I don't care if they, if they go there and they don't. Some people it is, but I take time in education to figure that out. Now, when it comes to education, it's a simple number, guys, 100 grand per kid. Unless they're 15 years of age or older, 15 years of age, you can do 50,000 per kid or 75,000. Whatever number you feel comfortable with, but don't overcomplicate it. Don't be like, oh, let me look online with the cost of it. No, don't overcomplicate yourself. It's about, it's about 100 grand per kid for education. When you take into account room and board and this and tuition and taxes and that, that all that, it's about 100 grand per kid. So do that number. And then when it comes to legacy, right? Oh, I'm sorry. How I get referrals on education if they went to college, I'll ask them. I say, listen, do you still have any college buddies you hang out with? Right? Do you represent a, a social gathering, a fraternity, a sorority that you still connect with? Because that's a great referral source. Like I'll tell you right now, in, in, um, in Naples, Florida, there's a huge group of Pi Kappa Alpha organization. I'm talking about like alumni that still get together. There's a huge group of people here in Naples, Florida that get together for University of Florida games and University of Georgia games. Huge group of them that get together. Look at Irving, he's like, yup, you right. <laughs> They get to get, I mean, they've got like, they got bars they go to, they got, they got organizations, they got, I mean, they're, they're, they're organized. I, I, I learned that through talking about education. How many people I have that, you know, they, they happen to have gone to, to Georgia or they went to University of Florida and they still connect. That's, those are referrals. Fraternities, they, those are connections, referrals. Sorority, same thing. And then legacy, I'll say, listen, is there anybody outside of your spouse or children that you want to make sure you leave something behind for? Or a church group or a charity group, right? And they tell me, guess what those are? Those are probably other referrals and beneficiaries. And then once I've asked that, I go, now let me ask you this last question, right? For children, is college enough? If you leave them behind with enough money to cover college, is that enough or do you want to leave them with a little bit more? And your spouse, if you leave her behind with a house paid off and income replaced, is that enough or do you want to leave them a little bit more? I want to know. I want to know. Guys, when I do all this, this entire, and I, and you know, I'm, I got, I got a notepad. 
right? Or I got my fact finder and I'm filling out the numbers next to this. But while I'm filling out, I'm filling out the full fact finder. So by the time I'm done, I know all their debts, who it's with, right? Which one's unsecured, which one's a car loan, which one's a da -da -da -da, right? I know what they do for a living, how long they've been working there, what their salary is, right? I know what their side hustle is. I know what their mortgage is. I know what their assets are, their bank account balance, their checking accounts, their 401ks, their old 401ks, their IRAs, their investment accounts. I know their kids' names, their dates of birth, right? I know if they want to have any more kids in the future. I ask all those questions. You know, I, I know, I know who are the most important people that they want to leave money behind for, or if they're very, if they're avid members of their church, they want to leave something behind for, or a charity group. I know that. So I, it took me a good 20, 25 minutes to get through this, but I've gathered the whole fact finder. Once I do the math and I add it up, you know what happens 90% of the times? 90% of the time, they need, they need three quarters of a million to a million and a half of coverage. I'm sorry to tell you, but express underwriting is not, it might not be the thing for you, but more importantly, I'm leaning on that number. I'm leaning on that number. I'm leaning on the 750 or the million or the million and a half. Because if you run, you know, on a, on a 40 year old, you run a million and a half of term life insurance guys, that's an easy 150 bucks a month. That's 1800 in premium. So you, so you can go one of two routes when you talk to that client. You could spend 20 minutes not doing this and just talking about the benefits and the huge pros and pros about the IUL. Get them on 150 bucks a month if they're on a tight budget, but yet their face value is dirt small. They got 100000 200000 250000 maybe $300,000 of coverage, which won't suffice this story. Right. That's 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 the that's the agent that likes to sell on on the benefits of IUL only. That's all they want to talk about. Or or you spend time on the dime analysis, figure out how much insurance they have. And maybe their budget only allows for a term insurance or maybe it only allows for, a, you know, a, a, an IUL with a with a term insurance on the side. I mean, don't get me wrong. Once I do this presentation and they get them, they give me their number. I then say to them, are you aware of the types of insurances that there that exist? I don't even let them answer. I'll tell them, are you aware of the three types of insurances that exist that can get you this $1.2 million of coverage you need? You know what? Let me show you. And then I take out another page and I do the, I do the hustle, right? I'll do the term insurance, the GUL, and the IUL presentation to explain all three of them. The Camry, the Lexus, the Ferrari. And then I asked them, I said, out of these three types of cars, which one do you want to get into? Oh, I want to get into the Ferrari. Okay, got you. You know what 90% of the people will tell you? I want to get into the Ferrari, but I'm not going to afford the Ferrari. Okay, well, let's figure out what your budget is. That's when I then do a budget. My system, but I'm, I'm systematic, guys. I am systematic. Dime analysis, three types of insurances, right? Term, GUL, IUL. Boom, budget. I only go to budget if they're interested in the IUL because I want to make sure that I'm not going to be dealing with a chargeback. Because if the person says to me, well, listen, I can afford 300 bucks a month. Okay, cool. Take notes on this. This is a piece, this is clutch for you guys. You, you'll pick up an extra 600 AP every single time you do this. Every single time you do this, I do this every single time. They tell me I got a $300 budget. Okay. And they're interested in the IUL, let's say. I go, listen, Mr. Client, if I can get you this $1.2 million of coverage that you need, plus get you that cash accumulation account that you're looking for, but instead of $300, it costs $350, is that a deal breaker or is that, is, is, is that enough to move forward? I'll repeat it. Mr. Client, if I can get you this $1.2 million, whatever this number is, if I can get you this three quarters of a million dollars of insurance that you need and get you the cash accumulation account that you're looking for to grow your money tax free. But instead of 300 bucks, it costs 350 a month. Is that a deal breaker or do we move forward? You know what 90% of the people tell you? I can do it. I, I, mean, I mean, I told you 300, but I can do 350. Okay, cool. Do you know why? I'll tell you why guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to design an IUL at 300 bucks a month. That's his budget. But that extra 50, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna purchase a term insurance policy. You know why? Because 99.9% .9 of the times, 
This $300 a month IUL will not meet this three quarters of a million or million dollars of insurance that they need. So they need to supplement. Maybe this 300 bucks a month only gets them a half a million dollars of IUL. I need to supplement. I need another 50 bucks a month to get another half a million dollars of term, in, term insurance because at the end of the day, I want them to have cash accumulation, but I still need them to get the full amount of insurance protection that, they, that their diamond analysis says that they need. So they get two policies. They get two policies. I got 1.5 million on myself, but it's a combination. It's a combination of GUL, term insurance, and IUL. If I pass away, my family doesn't care if the check comes from term insurance or the IUL or G. They just care that the check is coming. So I got to make sure within their budget, I get the cash accumulation that they're interested in plus the death benefit that they want. That's how I sell multiple policies at once. I just did, um, ask Howard. I just did, a, I, 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 I had a client, had a half a million dollars of express term insurance. He's paying 250 bucks, $270 a month for it. Why is he paying so much? He's in his mid thirties. He's healthy, non-smoker, like, holy crap. But do you know what it was? The prior agent wanted to sell him an express quick underwriting program. I did a dime analysis on the guy. He needed $1.2 million of coverage when I did his dime analysis. I said, listen, bro, you got, you need 1.2 million. You only have a half a million. So let me ask you a question. Out of everything in this list here, which ones are we going to cut off? Which ones are you not going to have? Because you don't have enough money to fulfill this story. You know what he said? I don't want to cut any of it off. I need more coverage. Okay. What's your budget? We did his budget. He can only afford what he was paying. He can't pay more. So then I said to him, I go, listen, if I can get you twice the amount of coverage for the same price, would you do business with me? He says, yeah, of course. You know what? I, I, I go, now, what you're going to do with me is not going to approve within a day or two. What you're going to do with me might require medical exams. It's going to take three or four weeks. But if they approve you as healthy as you tell me you are, you're going to have twice the amount of coverage for the same price. You know what? He said, go for it. You know what I sold him? I sold him a half a million GUL. I sold him a half a million term insurance. Both of those with full living benefits. The GUL with a return of premium rider and living benefits that'll last a lot longer than 30 years, right? It'll last until 100 for 20 bucks cheaper than his term insurance that he currently had. Why? Because I was willing to do full underwriting. with him. And then you know what's crazy? He gets approved. And you know what he says to me? He says, hey, can I get another half a million? Sure. So now he's in underwriting right now for another half a million dollars of coverage. So he's leaving this coverage. He's leaving the, the interaction he had with me with more coverage for a little bit more money than he was already paying and better benefits. You know what caused all of that? This time analysis. If I didn't do this, he wouldn't have clarity as to how much insurance he needs. A lot of people go, oh, half a million, that's more than enough. But when you do the math, it's not really that much. It's not. It's not. I mean, especially if you got young kids. If you got if you got 10 plus years, you have to 10 plus years left of raising your children. Guys, how much does it take to run your household? Think about that number. Right? I mean, think about, I mean. It probably takes you 75 grand, 100 grand to run your household. Even if it's just 50 grand. If you're replacing 10 years, that's $500,000 just in income replacement. That's not even taking into account paying off the mortgage, education for kids, inflation, nothing. And funeral costs, nothing. That's just 10 years of replacing your income, right? Until your children are old enough to support and sustain themselves. So I say this to you from personal experience. I prefer to sell on dime. I prefer to sell on this because guess what? This also lets me get emotional. It also lets me learn about them. It also helps me build a relationship with them because you know what's crazy is this. This is something you guys need to learn. Six months from now to a year from now, I promise you, I promise you, another agent's going to walk in that door of that client and, gonna, and, and you know what that agent's going to try to do? That agent's going to try to replace your business. And they're going to have a sexy illustration in the back pocket. And maybe that illustration is $5 cheaper than what you showed them. You want to know what retains your clients? This. They're going to look at it and they're going to go, man, this new agent who came in, who's younger, better looking, whatever, whatever, whatever. They didn't really get to know me. They just presented me a half a million dollars or a million dollars. And, you know, they want to talk to me about the bells and whistles, but they didn't really get to know me. Yet, 
when I met with Howard or I met with Frank or I met with Rob or I met with Caesar, or I met with Irvin or Tanisha or Glenn or whomever it is, right? Man, they, they learned all about me. They spent time. There's a relationship there. I'm not, I don't want to compromise that relationship. Do you know I say that to my clients when I deliver their policies? I do. I tell them, I go, listen, I want you to know something. Six months to a year from now, you're going to be tempted to cheat on me. They're like, what? Yeah, you're going you're gonna to be tempted to cheat on me. You're going to be tempted to cheat on me. They're like, what do you mean? They're like, somebody younger, somebody better looking, somebody taller is going to show up to the door, and they're going to have a sexier illustration to show you, and you're going to cheat on me. You're going to show them, you're going to show them our paperwork. You're going to show them the policy that I showed you. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. And they're going to sh- they're going to tell you that they have the bells and whistles better than I do. But I want you to know something. I want you to know something. I spend time to get to know you. I spend time to get to know your family. The reason you got X amount of insurance, the reason you got $720,000 of insurance is because $720,000 is what you need based on this story that I learned about you. You see, I am wifey material. I am not side chick material. That, that taller, skinnier, more attractive agent that's coming through the door six months from now, that's just a side chick. I'm wifey material. So after you cheat on me and you show them that policy, you're going to remember how much time and energy was invested into our relationship. I do it just like that. No lie. You know what's crazy is they'll call me up six months from now. Yo, yo, you're right. Somebody came in and I was about to cheat on you and I chose not to because we have a relationship. Relationship is what keeps and retains your clientele. And I'll tell you another little added benefit to selling them IUL in turn together. You get to tell the person, listen, does this IUL reach your retirement goals? It doesn't, which means you need to convert this term insurance every year and increase your savings. Yes, I do. Do I have your permission every year to sit down with you and re-review your, your savings, your budget, your retirement goals, your insurance needs with the intention of potentially converting over more of this term insurance into permanent insurance so that we can increase your savings for your future. Sure. You get them in that mindset, every year you can convert a quarter of your term insurance into more IUL, more IUL. Guaranteed approved, boom, boom, boom. And if the the information on the original application hasn't changed, I mean, you just should resubmit. I do that, I'll call the clients up, hey, it's that year, that time again. How much more do you wanna put into it? Oh, you know, convert another quarter million of my million dollar term. Okay, how much do you wanna put in? 200 bucks a month, 250, okay. I run the numbers, be on the lookout for the application in your inbox. Done. More sales, more sales, more sales. Because you built a relationship. You spent time here in the beginning, building relationship. Because in the beginning, you're selling three things. You're selling yourself, you're selling the company, you're selling the product. That's why you gotta take so much time to build that relationship in the beginning. But once you've done that, you already sold yourself, you already sold the company. Now you're just reminding them of the product. That's all you're doing. Now, granted, in the same token, when you're working final expense leads, that's a little bit more transactional. You're dealing with, if you're, especially in middle America, you're dealing with people on social security, their income limits, everything is budget to them. All they want is 10, 10 to $20,000 of final expenses to cover the funeral cost. People who purchase final expense insurance are buying it because they realize, they realize that they should have done something sooner, but now they have limited choices. That's why, that's the truth. Because somebody who has a hundred grand sitting in the investments, a million dollars sitting in investments, they're not gonna buy federal expense insurance. They have enough there to cover the funeral costs. Someone who bought insurance in their thirties and forties and did the right thing, they have insurance. They're not gonna, somebody who's buying final expense insurance because they realize, holy crap, I ran out of time. I didn't do proper finances back in the day. I'm on a limited income, but let me at least not leave a burden behind. That's more transaction. That's more Mr. Klein, what can you afford? I can afford 50 bucks. Okay, well, 50 bucks will get you 10 grand. Oh, but I want 15 grand. Well, you gotta put 75 bucks a month for 15. Now it gets more budget. When you deal with mortgage protection needs, when you deal with referrals, this is, I mean, guys, this is gold. This is the way I was taught. I sell on the value of insurance and death benefit before I sell on the benefits of life insurance as far as cash accumulation is concerned. Cash accumulation is huge, it's huge, great. But you can get just as much premium on a GUL if you do the right diamond analysis. You get just as much premium on a term policy if you do the right diamond analysis because you're put, you're selling 
you, when someone does their analysis, you realize they need a lot more than a half a million to three quarters of a million of coverage. Simple as that. Tanisha asks questions. The term policy you add to the IUL is an annual. Is an annual? It's not. The reason I ask them, you know, when they tell me I got a $300, 300 budget, I go, can I, can, can, can I, can, if I can meet your goal at 350, would you allow? It's because I'm taking into account that extra 50 bucks is monthly premiums to the term policy. So I end up doing 300 bucks a month into the IUL, 50 bucks a month into the term policy. You know what I mean? And sometimes they tell me my budget's 200, my budget's 400, and I do the same thing. Mr. Client, your budget you told me is 400 bucks. If I can meet your goal of cash accumulation, tax-free returns, but also meet this insurance need, and instead of it being 400, it costs me 450, would you allow me to? Do we still have a deal or is this a deal breaker? Right, I wanna know, because now I got the wiggle room to play with. Does that make sense, Tanisha? Just go ahead and type in the text box if it does or if it doesn't. Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So guys, use that a lot. Use that. That that helps building that kind of report. Let me let me get into. Um, I want to do something. One thing real quickly here, and then we're going to be done. We'll be done here in the next five minutes. I want to show you guys something. I'm going to show you what putting your numbers in every week does for you. And I, I'm not going to lie. Um, Actually, let me, let me pause this because we're good on this training.